So, first let's review. What did we talk about last week? Dog. Dog? That's right. What specific? The icon. The icon. Which icon? What did we talk about last week? But specifically, who was here last week? Can I see hands? Okay. You were all here. What did we talk about? We talked about the cross. Now, who can remember? When I told you I would have a place, right? I said I was kidding. Apparently I wasn't kidding. Yeah. Okay. How do you make your cross? Hold up your right hand, put your, your two fingers and your thumb together, and put your other two fingers down like this. You see? Okay. Then you touch your forehead, and you touch above your belly button, and you touch your right shoulder. Your right shoulder first, remember, this is what shows us that we're orthodox. And then your heart. Okay? <coughs> Don't forget. You should do the sign of the cross every time before you come for communion. Now, there's a practical note that I should make here. Don't forget about the cross when you're standing for the chalice and then say, oh no, and make the cross on the back. Because you might bump the chalice. Okay? You make the sign of the cross while the person in front of you is receiving communion. So that when it's your turn, you're already ready to come and receive. Then you give the priest your name. He says, the handmaid of God, the servant of God, and you say what your name is, because you're naming yourself to God. He knows who you are. He knows you by name. So we come and we commune in our Christian name. So you always say your name when you come to communion. And you say it loudly and clearly so the priest can hear. Right? So that's how you come to communion. You make your cross, or the person in front of you is receiving communion. And then when the, it's your turn to come, you say your name, and you open your mouth wide. And the priest will put communion inside of your mouth. The priest will put, to put communion in your mouth, and you will close your mouth on the spoon, so that the priest can be sure that communion will stay in your mouth when you take the spoon out, okay? This is simple. You've heard this before. I can tell you this because most of you do very well. But it's always good to review for all of us how to receive the movie. Okay. <coughs> Who can tell me what's on the iPhone that I'm passing around? Okay. Well, there's a lot of animals. Who can tell me what's on the iPhone? That's right. There's a donkey. And a tiger. And a tiger, yes, I think there's a tiger. And a wild bird. Yes, there are a lot of wild animals. Can you see the sun and the moon and the stars there? Okay. Or can you see the ocean and the land? Yes. Okay. Did you see the birds and the fish? Yes. They're all on the icon. So what does the icon show? Who else is in the iPhone? A kitty! A kitty! Not actually you. Pets, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Word of God is in the icon. Jesus Christ is in the icon. What I'm showing the Kapadia, what I'm showing the children, is an icon of the creation. And this is good for us to remember that when we say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything that we see in the world is the creation of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we don't think about it. Because what it says in the Bible is that God created. And we don't hear about Jesus Christ for thousands of years until he comes to the New Testament. But the icon shows Jesus. Because Jesus is the Word of God by whom all things were made. And it's interesting, I'll say that in the grown ups the distraction is. Okay. So God made all the animals. God made the fish, 
and the birds, and the animals, and the land, and the sea, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars. So everything you see in the world, God made. Then what? Who did God make next? Adam and Eve. No. Good guess. Who did God make next? Yes. And what were their names? Adam and Eve. And Adam means earth because they were made out of the ground. Okay? And Eve means mother, the mother of all living, because they are the father and the mother of all of us. We are all their descendants, right? Now, where did God put them when he made them? Good guess. Where else? Good guess. They put them, he put them in the Garden of Eden. Why? To keep them safe. It was a garden. It was beautiful. It had flowers and trees and everything they needed to eat and to live. So God made the first two people and he, why did he make them? He made them so he could watch over them, but what did he want them to do to him? Respect him. What else? What did God want from people when he made them? This is important. No. He put them in the garden, that's good. What did God want from people? He wanted them to respect him. That's right. He said not to eat from the one tree. But what he wanted them to do, he told them what not to do. What he wanted them to do. He wanted them to love them. This is why God created us. It's the same reason that your parents had you. Because they wanted you to love them. And they wanted somebody else to love, to take care of. Okay? Your parents love you, right? All of your parents love you. You know this. I want to see nodding heads. Come on. And do you, love, do you love your parents? Now, do you always do what your parents want you to do? Okay. So, sometimes you fail to love your parents perfectly. This is called being a human being. Okay? Adam and Eve did the same thing. God asked them to love him. And instead, what did they do? You have answered. You do. You spoke out of They ate the tree and told them not to. They disobeyed him. Now, when they disobeyed him, this meant that they were separated from God. And they told them that if they ate the tree, they would die. So they had to go out of the garden, which was so beautiful. And they went into the world, and they had children, and their children had children, and eventually they became them. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. We all live outside of the garden. We all live in the same world that they lived in. Because we disobey God, who only wants us to love Him. Yes? Was that they forever Yes, that's a good point. Did you hear what he said? They were created so that they would never die. Man and woman, Adam and Eve, were supposed to live forever. Now, do you know anybody who lives forever? Okay. We hope so. Okay. Everybody dies. And Adam and Eve died. And they went into the grave. And you see them there in the icon. Did you know who that was? In the icon is Adam and Eve. That's who they are. They're the first man and the first woman. And they were in the tomb. That's right. Now, what's happening in the icon? 
I'm going to tell you. Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and because they disobeyed Him, they died. And all of us now die. But God did leave us things. That's what the icon shows. It shows Jesus who came and died Himself, even though He was God. God is not supposed to die, right? But God came and He died, and because He died, He could go into Hades. He could go into hell. He could go and free Adam and Eve. So you see, there's a happy ending to the story. Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and because they disobeyed, they had to go out of the garden, and eventually they died, and all of us who are descended from them eventually die. But it's not the end of the story. What we see in the icon is that God loves us so much that He came after us. He looked for us. He chased us. Like your parents do, you disobey them, right? If you disobey your parents and you run away, or you do something you're not supposed to do, they don't just leave you there. They come after you. And they know you. And they bring you back. This is what God did for us. And he did it with what? We talked about it last week. What did we talk about last week? The cross. This is what it means to be a Christian. And I need you all to remember this because it's very important. Human beings are supposed to love God. Now, do we love God like we're supposed to? No. Mostly? No. Mostly we forget. God doesn't leave us though like that. Just like our parents don't leave us alone. He comes after us. And He came after us with the cross. And He died and He comes into hell and He raises up the dead. This is what we believe. This is the first thing that Christians believe. Which is why we're starting here today. Okay? So, can you remember that? What does God want us to do? He wants us to love Him. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Remember yeah. that. God wants us to love Him. Yeah. Good. If we don't love Him, what does He do? Does He kick us out of the arms? No. No. He <laughs> dies because we're away from Him. He doesn't kill us. That's important. God does not kill us. Just like God did not kill Adam and Eve. They died because they had left God. And then He came after them. And He brought them back to life. Do you understand? It's important. God didn't just create the world and then leave it alone. When the world fell away from Him, He came after them and He healed them. So, there's one more thing that I want you to think about. Adam and Eve saw God again when He came into hell and broke them out of their tools. Where do we meet Jesus? No, but look at it. This is an easy answer because we're about to do it. Where do we meet Jesus? In communion. When we come to communion, that's who we see. The person that we receive, that we encounter, that touches us and heals us in communion is Jesus. Alright? Remember that. When you're making your cross and opening your mouth and thinking about all the things you have to think about to come to receive communion, remember that you're not just meeting the priest. The priest is very unimportant at that moment because you're meeting Christ who loves you and who saves you. Okay? Now stand up and say my name.